of you are requested, please mute yourself during the session. There would be a, you know, query session after the webinar. So you can unmute yourself that time and uh, you can discuss with the expert. Can you see my screen now? The full screen view, sir. Okay. Yeah. Can you see now? Yeah, I can see now, sir. Okay. So yeah, so very good evening all. On behalf of Astron E College, I, Ms. Paulumi Banerjee, welcome you on board for the webinar session on risk assessment tool using Japanese technology, uh, patient safety first. So as you all are aware that Astron Institute of International Studies is the first in the country to be accredited by NABIT for the online courses and we have recently launched Astron E-College under the umbrella of Astron Institute of International Studies. Astron E-College is an online portal for working professionals, specially catering to healthcare professionals. The courses are pre-recorded brief sessions uh, of two to three hours duration. However, it is flexible. As per the student convenience, they can do the course. The courses comprises of various modules and assignment. On completion of the course, the student will get the globally recognized certificate and the certificate has lifetime validity. In addition to healthcare domain, exclusive courses in soft skill motivationals and banking and finance domain are also available. So for more details, you can just log into www.astronecollege.com. I will share the link in the chat box. You can, you can just uh, check out our courses and you can just connect us in 9650422 number also. Um, now I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome Mr. Deepak Agarkhet, who is our honored speaker for the session. He is general manager at IISC Medical School Foundation, Bangalore, having more than 30 years of experience in the healthcare industry. He is specialized in hospital facility management, medical device management, healthcare quality, and patient safety. He is NABH technical assessor for hospital facilities and technical expert for NABL medical device standards and also co-chair for Indian Biomedical School Consortium at AMTZ, which is a part of Quality Council of India. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Um, my name is Deepak, as introduced. So I'm currently working in IAC Medical School Foundation as a general manager. The, today's presentation is about risk mitigation using Japanese tools as a part of the patient safety. Namaste once again to all of you. I would like to show some of the pictures so which you will come across in the hospital. This is a, in the emergency area where a patient is brought in and a defibrillation is uh, going on. This is an ICU scenario where a patient is connected to ventilator, patient is connected to the many other medical equipments like syringe pump, infusion pump, and physiological monitor. This is a typical operation theater where operation is going on with the patient, the clinicians, the nurses, and technicians around. So in all these, you can see a question mark has been put. So what is there in this? So this is a common scenario in any of the hospital and day-to-day -day practices. But there is something which need to be looked into so that safety of the patient and the staff can be clearly understood from all these. How it can be done? So let's go into the process. So for all these things, whether the patient is being given a shock in the emergency, whether the patient in the ICU connected to the patient monitor and other medical equipments, whether the operation is going on, there has to be set of, there has to be set of activities. So process is basically a series of 
actions that lead to desired results or the output like in the operation theater the desired result is patient has been operated for the particular the disease and uh, the set of activities or actions need to be performed so that a desired results can be achieved so there are many processes in any of the healthcare delivery system or any of the um, uh, work which we undertake so the process for example handling the hazardous material in the hospital is one process how to handle it then medication administration to a patient itself is a process electrical power change over from a city power to the diesel is a process or giving the cpr is a process so for any process there is a possibility of a failure okay so let's understand what is a failure failure is the manner in which the product or a part or a service does not meet the customer expectation for example the spillage of a chemicals of a wet film process on a staff as you saw earlier slide there is a process so the failure of a process can be spillage of a chemical so the earlier we saw process of medication management wrong dosage to a patient is a failure we saw earlier a process wherein the power is been changing from the city power to the dg no electricity in the patient ward because of the non switching over is a failure similarly non functioning of a defibrillator so these are the failures so any process there will be failures so let's understand the effect of the failure effect of a failure is basically a study wherein the customer could be external or internal the effects of can be a anything either it can be an injury to a staff or it can be a injury to a patient it can be a delay in the service or it may not be relevant so what we trying to say is there is a set there is a process process is set of activities each activity may have a possibility of failure and each failure has an effect some effect can be severe some can be moderate some can be minor so let's understand further so we understood a process so let's understand what is hazard harm risk and safety because the present presently what we are trying to understand is a risk mitigation to so in order to understand the risk mitigation we need to understand what is hazard harm risk as well as safety you can see a picture here a person is trying to take out the electrical uh, cable but there is an exposure of the uh, the cable so this is a hazardous condition hazard is a potential source of harm here the harm has not happened person has not touched but if he touches there is a source of uh, condition the condition wherein hazardous condition is there you can see a picture here a patient uh, the person is having a shock okay there is an expo there is a electrical socket is open which is hazardous condition he has accidentally touched and he has got a shock so what is an harm harm is basically a physical injury or a damage to the health of a people or damage to a property or the environment from a hazardous condition harm is going to happen so we need to watch for a hazardous condition and what is risk because we are all talking about a risk risk mitigation risk is nothing but a combination of probability of occurrence of the harm okay how probable the harm can occur and what is the severity of the harm a severity here a shock has been has 
patient got a shock, the CV rate may be more. If there is, uh, if there is something, if he is about to touch something which he has not done, okay, the CV rate is less. So this the risk factor. So basically, is a combination of probability of occurrence of the harm and the severity of the harm. So risk we classify low risk, medium risk, and high risk. So what we ultimately want is a safety. Safety is what a freedom from unacceptable risk. All we are trying to do from last from last few slides, I was trying to show the pictures. We are trying to achieve the safety, but we have the various condition, various processes are there. So in each of the process, whether a patient in the operation theater or a picture wherein um, I have shown a patient is being given a shock in the emergency, we are trying to achieve a safety. So in order to achieve a safety, I need to understand what are the hazardous conditions which can be seen in that process, what harm can happen and how can I reduce the harm so that a risk level is being low. With a low risk, a safety is going to be high. So now let's understand what is unsafe condition. Okay. So um, in a hospital scenario, a defective machine like for example, a defibrillator defective is an unsafe condition. A material which is defective, like an expired medicine, is an unsafe condition. A method, there is no process set of activities, standard set of activities to achieve a desired uh, result, is also basically an unsafe condition. And in an environment, there is a no proper temperature, humidity, lux level. All these things are unsafe conditions. Okay. So is unsafe condition is the only thing which can lead to an accident? No. There is something more, which is unsafe act. What is an unsafe act? Okay. Basically, the cause is why the unsafe act can happen? A lack of knowledge for any person to operate an equipment, a lack of knowledge for any person to give a medication, lack of experience or lack of intention to work. So these are unsafe acts. It can be human error also, absent-minded, changing of attention level, shortcut or guess. Human errors are more prone. You might have seen the nurses working in shift and continuing further in the second shift and sometimes going to third shift. This is an unsafe act because you have a you have to have proper attention level. Can you get an attention level when you are working 24 hours continuously? It's very difficult. So unsafe condition and unsafe act, these are the two major combinations which will result into an accident, okay? So the accident is a combination of unsafe condition and unsafe act. You can see here, the unsafe condition is there, uh, okay? And unsafe act from a person is there, so then the accident is going to happen. So what we are trying to see and trying to achieve through this study is, how can we reduce the accident? How can increase the safety? How can we reduce the risk? So you can see here, uh, there is an x-axis, which is an unsafe action. There is a y-axis, unsafe condition. So here, there, here at the beginning, there is a safe condition, then uh, safe action. But when you come here further, okay, unsafe condition, unsafe act. So this particular combination is what we want to avoid. Okay, unsafe condition is, for example, non-functional defibrillator in a crash cart. This in this example, let us take unsafe act 
is a untrained RMO on ACLS or untrained nurse while drawing the blood sample. So if this took unsafe condition or unsafe act is there, then we may end up in an accident. One more example, let us see. Here, a case study we are going to take here um, in the coming slides. A patient is being entrapped along with the technician in a, with an oxygen cylinder, which is a metallic, which has gone and hit the magnet of MRI and patient has come in between and unfortunately technician was holding and ward boy was holding and he also was pulled by the magnet because he was holding the oxygen cylinder. So here unsafe condition is there. Okay. Why unsafe condition? The door was open so that anybody could enter. Unsafe act. A ward boy was not knowing that he cannot take the metallic thing inside the MRI gantry room. So both have resulted into a the condition which an accident wherein there is a fatal injury which has happened to a the, the concerned person. So what are the types of risk which are there in the hospital? So far we talked about the process, we talked about the um, various types of the um, failures in a process, what is the effect of the failure. Then we also uh, went on to discuss about the uh, the various uh, the unsafe acts and unsafe conditions. So, what are the different risks? <laughs> the risk is a clinical risk, which can happen. The clinical risk is something which we need to avoid. Patient has come for for with some clinical condition. A financial risk can also happen in a hospital. Okay, patient has come with a uh, estimate uh, given an estimate of two lakh rupees for a particular um, surgery, but it turned out to be 10 lakh. So it's a the risk which has happened. Why the financial risk has happened, we need to look into. A safety risk, uh, there is a risk which, uh, which can be a risk which is to a patient or to an uh, employee, a safety risk. A legal risk which can happen to, to hospital because of the erroneous uh, results or whatever the, the perception of a patient <laughs> for actions a technological risk can also be one of the risk so the type of the risk are customer related okay here the patient related or data loss risk can also happen employer related risk can also happen risk related to a natural calamities or hazardous can also happen so the various types of risk which are there in the hospital. So now, what is a risk assessment? Because today's topic is all about how to assess the risk and how to come with an action which will reduce the risk. Okay. A risk assessment is a thorough look at your workplace in a hospital to identify those things, situations, processes that may cause harm particularly to the people. People can be patient, relatives or the staff. Then evaluate how likely and severe the risk is and decide what measures should be in place to effectively prevent or control the harm from happening. So that's all about the risk assessment. Further to that, why risk assessment is important? Create the awareness of hazardous and risk. Identify who may be at a risk. Okay, it may be employee, it can be cleaner, a visitor, contractor, public, a patient. Determine if the existing control measures are adequate or more should be done. It's very, very important. The, if the, you are having a more risk, more harms happening on a regular basis, then may, you may lose the customers. It may come in headlines. Okay, so you need to assess what is your existing control measures and prevent the injuries or illness so that it can be done at the design stage during the hospital or as a process so that we have a control on the our process so that a risk level has been 
reduced if not eradicated okay and prioritize the hazards and control measures there are so many processes are there so many uh, the hazardous conditions are there so which are the hazard condition we need to attack okay because hospital is not a, a, a place wherein only few set of processes are there there are hundreds of processes if you can see in nabh 683 objective elements have been put so each will have their own process so many sub processes are there so the risk are there in each so hazardous conditions are there so we need to prioritize which hazardous condition we need to attack first so let's see so now let's come to uh, the today's topic wherein we are talking about a japanese tool so there are various tools are there there is nothing um, great about a japanese tool it's one of the tool but if it is been effectively used it is going to be equally uh, same as what can be used like a fma tool so let's understand so so what uh, what is a japanese tool is all about so the, the tool has three major activities wherein first you need to go and check in the your workplace which is been called as a gamba in japanese term to see what is the hazardous condition okay and try to check the uh, the severity of it okay so we use something called as a 2s technique then we call ky technique then we come to a risk assessment score once we have a risk assessment then we come with a actions to mitigate it then we come with a some uh, new standard operating procedures or work instructions and training so basically 2s ky ra and work instruction these are the four things which need to be done so that a risk can be mitigated so let's go into the detail to understand these things first let us understand all about 2s so i am sure you may be knowing uh, one of the japanese tool called as a 5s so out of the 5s so 2s is what is been used basically as a part of a the okay so first one is out of 2s first s is sort okay sort is basically when you are in a workplace segregate what is needed what is not needed or what is needed later and what is not needed so you can discard it okay so this will ensure that whatever is needed is been available in a short time and which is not needed or maybe needed maybe after a month is kept at a place which is away so that unnecessarily movement is been avoided so this is one of the uh, the first thing which need to be done in a workplace so that we can start working towards reduction of a risk so you might have seen that so many garbage unused things are been kept in in your workplace are they really needed if they are needed are they needed on a regular basis in regular basis also are they needed on a daily basis weekly basis monthly basis can be uh, sorted accordingly those things which are not needed you put it in a uh, red bin and later on it can be discarded okay sort means that we remove all the items from the workplace that are not needed for a current production or operation okay so the tag word is when in doubt move it out if something which is in doubt if it is oh it can be used may not be used then keep keep it away from your uh, regular workplace second is is storage once you have taken out the things which are not needed and those which are needed are been kept so it has to be properly kept you can see here an example of a the toolbox of an engineering toolbox so which is been kept like this okay so these are all needed okay in the first yes all needed have been kept now 
can i expect to get anything immediately no because they have not been arranged in a proper way so if you arrange it so if you put in a proper storage then it's easy for you to get the things so you we arrange the needed items so that they are easy to use and label them so that anyone can find them and move them out so this is what is needed as a part of the second s so first s will ensure that the room is been properly clean and what is been needed are been kept and what is not been needed is disposed of and once those which is needed are been kept properly kept which is a set in order or storage so this is what need to be done on regular basis in your workplace this is first step because what we are trying to do a risk assessment is proactively we are not doing a reactively we are trying to mitigate the risk before something happens incident happens so that's why we are trying to implement this a tool japanese tool out of which we have talked about 2s okay the 2s is place for everything and everything in its place so place for everything so these are all needed there there is a place for everything and everything in its place okay so that we can easily get those items okay now second step to achieve the risk mitigation is ky technique okay let's understand what is ky technique ky is basically a japanese word which is called as kick in yochi okay so is basically a danger prediction ky is a danger prediction so we are trying to predict the danger we are trying to see the hazardous condition okay so so basically it has been done step is what is the potential risk which we are having identify the point of risk okay which is the point of risk and then decide what need to be done and then confirm the solution with a touch and call so now let's understand the ky technique in detail okay as i said kyt is hazard prediction training okay which is called k is kickin is basically japanese word hazard yo chi is a prediction okay so you are trying to predict the hazard and work towards it okay so it's basically a japanese traditional prevention method to ha hazard and one of the risk assessment tool okay there are many types of tools for kyt okay so let's go into the brief about various ky tools which are there photo kyt solving problem kyt incident reporting kyt ordering and undertaking kyt touch and call point and call so let so by doing this so we increase the risk of sensitivity training risk sensitivity training is basically all the people because we are all working in our place we don't know what are the risk conditions which are there because we have never come across those things our knowledge is less for example as given example the person ward boy who was entering into the mri room was not knowing that metallic thing should not be taken so he was not aware so by using the ky technique risk sensitivity of the people is going to increase so which are the type of kyt as i said illustration kyt wherein you see the you go there you take one picture and all of you come and sit together and see what are the possible hazardous conditions can happen here for example in this picture hazard can happen completely power blank blackout can happen okay hazardous condition can happen the instruments which are there are broken hazardous condition is the the person who is not there uh, 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 have got a person who is doing surgery suddenly gets into a severe medical condition so these are the various so then you start looking into the what are the actions to be taken then another ky technique is pointing and calling okay you are trying to get some medicines for the 
patients and you are trying to say whether they are all the numbers are there or not pointing and calling third is a touch and call where you are going to touch as a team and call and sensitize third is stretch and call so this is stretch and call so these are the four ky techniques so let's go into the a brief about each of the ky technique okay so as i said ky technique is hazard prediction okay so illustration ky technique as i said first step is understand the actual situation to visit the location as a team watch carefully the area and come back to the boardroom and brainstorm on the hidden hazardous condition as i said i saw gave a picture of a operation going on first you have to understand the situation means first you have to know what is actually happens in the operation theater which operation theater we are going okay and watch the carefully the area and take pictures and come back to the boardroom and brainstorm and try to see what are the hidden hazardous conditions second step is to understand the risk of each hazardous pointed out by the team so when you find out okay there are so many hazardous conditions like i was mentioning the hazardous condition is like for example the power block blackout can happen during the operation is one of the hazardous condition so what what is the harm which can happen a harm which can happen is complete blackout a surgery is there a drill is inside the patient when the operation is happening so when when completely power blackout can happen so drill can go to some other other place inside the body and it can harm okay so so we trying to understand which are the various risk of each of the hazards pointed out third step is once you find out okay there is going to be power uh, blackout what is the counter measures which need to be taken so that the hazard conditions can be avoided so that's a third step and fourth is set up a target date for a closure and track the progress of hidden risk so you have understood that yes there is a possibility of a power failure so then try to understand why power failure can happen probably it's because the um, our our power which is been connected is is not uh, the ups which is been connected probably ups is not serviced so there is possibility that ups um, may break down there is a possibility that the power failure can happen because the the ot surgical lights which are there the bulbs may fuse off okay the other bulb may not take over so there may be various things so try to come with the action points and try to close the hidden risk so this is an illustration kyt you may be feeling that what is this going there and understanding it may be it looks very simple but it's one of the powerful technique which can be used if we as a team go there and identify the things and come back and work towards the risk mitigation so you can see uh, here a scenario where a patient is been connected um, to the various lines patient is in the um, icu setup so there are the hidden hazards are there so what are those things and what you do and what are the dangers so by looking at this so the the team can identify okay these are the hazardous condition like let me explain one of the condition the water is the 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 body fluid is tripping here okay and there is an extension cable here so that it may go there and it is short circuit can happen there is a um, flower plot here du during the uh, the patient who is getting investigated or during the rounds by the clinicians it may accidentally touch and it may fall down so various hazardous conditions uh, have been identified so once you identify the hazardous condition what need to be done is you need to come with the action plan okay step 1 you need to find out which are the potential hazards okay let's take one example okay cup is a hazard in the previous uh, the 
diagram what is the injury injury to health of a people or a damage to property it can fall down and it may injure what is the risk it is a medium risk okay because high probable as it is expected to be unstable base okay the base is unstable you can see in the previous picture it's a, put in a cantilever position so it's a but the damage may not be severe it's a uh, the medium so like that and what's the counter measure to be taken we understood the risk the counter measure is implement the five ways keep the cupboard uh, keep the cup on a bedside locker and do not use the slider to place the items so this is the counter measure and when it is to be closed we have put a target date so like that each of the hazardous condition we have come with what harm can happen what are the the type of risk level of risk high risk or low risk what is the counter measure and when it is to be closed and of course you need to attack on those which are having a high risk second ky technique is pointing and calling pointing at a target object by stretch arm and finger and st stating out loud and listen own sound example so here what is happening is a nurse along with the ot technician are taking the inventory inside the operation theater okay she is asking him ot medicine stock okay she is asking he is saying okay she is pointing out each one by one item and she is asking so why this is been done is it necessary it cannot be done visually you can see here a graph um the one of the the um, japanese railway technical research institute have done a study only seeing by eyes the mistake is around 2.4% but by calling it will reduce to 1% by pointing 0.7% by pointing and coiling it reduces to 0.4% so that's why the pointing and calling technique can be used this technique can be used for a crash cart as you know the crash cart is one of the important um uh, the thing which is been used in the critical areas and the the inventories in that are very very important certain medicines if it is not there when the patient have a crash so then if it is not there it is going to be big problem so and the crash cart is usually handed over shift by shift by one nurse to other by pointing and calling so you are going to reduce the risk otherwise what normally people do is they have a checklist everybody will tick the checklist without actually seeing it and once an audit happens then we find out that certain things are missing so pointing and coiling is another ky technique so here you can see look at an object point at it raise your right hand with your ear uh, right ear and bring your hand down so like this is it okay so in this way so you are trying to point it out and you are trying to tell loudly to the person so that other person will respond it touch and call if there are many people are there if there is a common activity is to be used so then then the, the touch and call is being used so it's a Uh, then it's a pointing and saying it loud together so this is what is been done so the example is uh, one of the team here they are trying to say that we take care of the patients uh, the all the um, um, the basic needs uh, while doing an examination they are trying to take an oath among themselves so they are touch and call so that when they are going for a work so this is there at the uh, at the back of their mind so that they will avoid or reduce the miss the mistakes so the touch and call is also one of the technique ky technique stretch and call is a group activity like for example here we are all for the uh, patient safety first we are trying to say patient safety first so by saying that we are trying to say that okay we are trying to address the patient safety issues on a on a regular basis on all um, walk of our life in the hospital so this is a stretch and call 
all the members stretch their hand and make first fist posture and all will speak loudly after the leader gives the signal so outcome what is the final outcome of the kyt why kyt is to be done as i said it increases the risk sensitivity people will get to know what are the risk they will be sensitive to the risk prevent the accident in the near miss stage so accident can be what is a near miss near miss is a condition like it is about to happen accident but it has not happened for example you are about to give a wrong medicine to a patient it has not given it's a near miss condition so with the ky technique so we can prevent the accidents enhance the safety culture the safety culture is been enhanced in each of the areas and every day kaisan is a continuous improvement culture is developed okay so now let's take one further example we have a, a lion okay so we are taking this as an example but we are, will relate it to the some of the uh, our day to day activity okay so lion is being used okay so the the hazard condition is anything that can cause harm or that you know okay this is a hazard condition if you go near to that so there is going is a hazard condition what is the risk okay so the risk is it can be high or low okay now the distance between the lion and the human if the person is coming near to this risk is very very high okay now how to do the risk assessment identify the hazard so you have identified the hazard you have a hazard lion is there estimate the degree of hazard what is the possibility and the severity of the accident okay what can happen if i go near to it it will it can only bite or it can kill if it is kill it is going to kill then the risk is very high evaluate the risk level that's what i am trying to evaluate and study the risk reduction measures what can be done so that the lion cannot attack me okay and determine the measures and implement it how can i implement it so this what need to be done as a risk assessment okay first step is identify okay danger that lion may bite you if you go near to the lion area okay person may be bitten while feeding a lion so the lion is there is let's say it's a zoo okay so when you are going to feed the lion so there is a possibility that it's a hazardous condition okay can you avoid it you cannot avoid it because the lion is to be there it cannot be um, given uh, without food it cannot stay without food so you have to go to that hazardous condition is going to happen okay estimate the degree of hazard what can be the degree of hazard can happen so now here the risk assessment i cannot just say by seeing certain thing or oh, risk is high risk is medium risk is low there has to be a, a numerical number to achieve whether risk is high low or medium to do that we are trying to understand we are trying to measure it how do we measure first is frequency of occurrence of the hazardous condition now frequency of occurrence can be given high medium and low the evaluation point is being given as a 4 5 4 and 3 5 is high for example if you are feeding the lion on a daily basis then you are going near to the hazardous condition the frequency is high if you are feeding once in a while to a lion okay maybe once in a week so then it's a low so it depends on the actual hazardous condition the frequency will happen will will, will get to and what is the severity of an accident in case if you go you have to go near to the lion in case if something if you go near to lion if it is not changed the fatal injury can happen injury can be a death or a damage of the parts it can be lost time of injury or no loss of injury so there can be various degree of accidents can happen so now for a fatal injury the score is 12 for a lost time injury it's a 6 and not lost time is 2 so this is the score which is for a accident severity third one is what is the occurrence possibility with the current process what is the possible occurrence can happen 
with a current process with the current cage which is there with no cage or a uh, the cage with the bigger holes probability of occurrence can be high or the it can be medium or it can be low we need to know what exactly is the scenario based on that we will be able to understand the the occurrence possibility so basically we are trying to talk about frequency of the work then accidental severity and occurrence possibility so and for each there are three levels and each level has a score and if we add all these scores then we'll get a risk evaluation point okay so you can see here frequency plus degree of accident plus possibility okay all these things added is going to get for for a current example so we have a line is there there is no case and a per, the, the person is going to go and feed a meat to a line so the it's a the frequency of work is daily because daily the line has to be fed okay so then i have to give a score of 5 okay and degree of accident what accident can happen line can kill him okay so because line is a dangerous so if probably if it was a goat if you are feeding something then the degree of accident is nothing okay and what is the possibility currently there is no fence possibility is very high if that is the case then the score is 8 if i add 5 plus 12 plus 8 it comes to 25 if 25 is there then probably risk level is very high so now we are trying to identify the risk score to attack on those which is a high score how did you attack it by looking into three aspect frequency of the work degree of accident and possibility okay now what can be done because end of the exercise is not just understanding the risk level what we need to do is reduce the risk how can i reduce the risk you can do a reduce the risk by putting a fence and have it maybe proper something like a pass box you open the pass box keep the uh, the meat and close it so that it can be opened automatically at the other side and meat the the lion can eat it so the risk the then what can happen is occurrence possibility is going to reduce you are not going to reduce the frequency of the work because you have to go near to the lion accident severity can still happen for example you have put a fence for some reason fence is not working then if the uh, the lion is going to attack the severity is still going to happen occurrence possibility probably you have reduced by putting the fence so by doing this you are trying to reduce so you can see here a risk level of from 19 to 25 is a rank a we will be highly concerned if there is a rank a rank a is been further divided to rank aa or ab similarly row lower risk can be rank c which can be cc okay so in this way we are going to address it so now how can we reduce the risk one is eliminate the risk at so how can i eliminate can the lion be taken out from the circus or its zoo if i take it out it is completely eliminated but in some of the processes some of the things cannot be eliminated for example yamarai in a uh, super speciality hospital cannot be eliminated so risk will be associated what can be done other way is substitution okay if there is a instead of lion we can bring something else a substitution or isolation of hazard you can isolate the hazard okay you can bring some engineering measures or you can bring some signage you can have a proper pp to the people all these things are trying to reduce the risk okay by adopting the control measures so by adopting the control measures for example here you can eliminate can i eliminate the line in the or the circus or can i eliminate the line in the uh, the mu uh, the our zoo so if that's one then it is automatically reduced 
if you know it's a line is very much needed then you can put a cage or you can put the administrative you can put a chain so that you 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 got giving and then the, it will come and pick up or you can have a proper pp so you have to decide which type of reduction methodology you need to adopt this is just one example given so you can use it in your day to day activity so that you can implement a risk reduction technique so i'll give one example here um, of a hospital kitchen wherein a chef is there he has to he has a the, the grinder machine he has to put a meat on a daily basis and grind it you can see here the severity what can happen if he accidentally puts his hand he, the the finger can be lost okay frequency every day he has to work because there is a non veg it's a non veg restaurant okay probable possibility any protection currently there is no protection so with all these things if i add it comes to 25 so what are the countermeasures because you know that there is a risk here he may lose his finger okay so countermeasure is you just put a mesh so what you did essentially is is severity we could not do change frequency you could not change because every day have to work so eight has become one so you have put the possibility has been reduced because you have a mesh so even if he puts a hand accidentally so it will not going to touch the plate another example is an uh, the host in the administrative staff which is there so there is a cable is there a severity maybe 2 or 6 it's not severe okay frequency daily the person has to move around possibility is high right now okay so the rank is bc so counter measure is you have conduit which is going inside the your flooring so that you will not get to know so you have eliminated it here yeah so in this way you are trying to understand the risk score and trying to reduce it as a manager we are all managers look at the actual workplace condition so i gave one example so you have to look at the workplace condition implement all the measures and be able to establish the actual conditions activities of the workplace okay so that you uh, will be able to explain co confidence in achieving the zero incidents so how it can be done once you put a measures so it should not happen like a the uh, 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 the again falling back to the old practice which is very very common so you can create a work instruction and work instruction can be detailed work instruction which will give the each step what are the key points and what visualization of these things so that it has been displayed on the wall so that everybody knows this need to be followed for example if a person has to go and give the meat to a lion uh, which is in the cage so there is a work instruction is there exactly the same thing has to be followed if the work instruction or sop is not there then whatever the measures we do is going to fall, fall flat okay so now let me quickly take you through one case study which i was talking about so this is a real thing which has happened in nair hospital where a death by negligence of a mri where the person has to has been struck in mri because of the negligence why the negligence because of the the lack of knowledge so let's look into this so mri being a magnetic so so that if if accidentally some person goes inside and comes in contact with the uh, the magnet with the metallic thing there is going to be an injury okay so this is one floor plan of the where mri machine is been put you can see here it's a plan where in mri machine is here okay the patient is coming like this patient is coming to reception from reception the patient is being going to the holding area patient is lying there when patient is called in patient goes from here and goes inside to the through the door inside the magnet room and the scan is going to happen okay so this is the current process which is being followed now what is an um, the kaizen idea 
Kaizen is a, means continuous improvement. So what's the idea description? Staff, patient, and relative awareness on MRI not having a metal objectives. That's what we want. And a zoning of the MRI area as per the um, American College of Radiology magnetic resonance safe practices to be followed. Visualization of a MRI safety at a various patient pathways. Installation of a nurse call and access control in MRI entry. Awareness of the member and work instruction. This is what we want to do. How do we achieve it? We can have an access control door to restrict the movement of any person entering into the MRI. Okay. And benchmarking with the best practices. So what can be done? So the, these are the points which we thought. So resulting is restrict the movement in the MRI area because we are trying to, we have put the access control so that anybody cannot enter into that. The MRI staff members can now concentrate on scan rather than the door. Because if the door is open, every time the technician has to see which patient is going, who is going inside. So now there is access control, only limited people can go in. The technician can focus on the patients. And avoided probable worst scenario, staff being hit by the metallic. So this can be avoided because you have an access control. And besides that, you have a visual display wherein it shows, okay, what is a hazardous condition. You also have a corridor wherein uh, there is a, there is a um, signage of a restricted area. Anybody and everybody cannot enter in this area. So the steps for implementation, sharing of unsafe condition and a news of MRI accident to the, all the people, so sensitizing the people. Then creating the zones. So now we have created four zones here as per the um, ACR guidelines. Zone one is anybody can go in that zone. Zone two is only the radiology reception, patient relatives can go. Zone three is mainly console room wherein only the transfer of the patient happens. Zone four is where actually patient is scanned. And then signage is which can be put call bell for a MRI entry door to support the technician to open the door, installation of access control so that anybody and everybody cannot go into the MRI, training to the staff on what is to be done and a regular monitoring and auditing. So, so this is visualization of the uh, everything so that people are aware that okay, nobody should go with a magnet inside the MRI. And future plan is put a safety door, where in a metallic door, if somebody is going with a pacemaker or implant, immediately it, it gives a buzzer. So that, and also there is a signage, so that patients and relatives are also been aware besides the staff. Okay, so now let's come back to the, our risk assessment score. Initially, risk assessment was frequency of the work is five because daily the patient has to go for a MRI. The MRI cannot be avoided. Patient taking into MRI cannot be avoided. It's fine. Fatal injury can happen, which can kill the patient or any person inside the gantry. It's 12. And current measures, there is no excess control. Okay. So the uh, there is a, a score is 4. So the current Kaizen activity, if I add, it's 21. So when I put the excess control door, so that becomes so four has become one, so it has become 18. So the risk level has reduced. So if you can see here, before Kaizen activity, there's a reception, there's a patient holding area, there's a magnet, there's a control room. So there is no zoning. So now the zones have been put. As I, you can see here, zone four is where the magnet is there. Zone three is where transfer is happening. Zone two is where the, uh, the patient dressing in holding and reception. Zone one is anything outside this. Okay. So what are the benefits? So the signages have been put. The people know which are the zones, where, what is to be done. Okay. This is a video which shows what exactly is been happening uh, based on this Kaizen activity. Let's see this. Patient is coming in to the MRI. Going to the reception, the patient file is being seen. Patient is being 
directed by the receptionist to the holding area the patient is taking to the holding area okay so which is a zone 1 in the zone 1 the nurse is going to assess the patient nurse is going to check whether patient has any uh, the previous operations whether patient is having any metallic things so she can uh, scan through a metal detector so everything is okay or not after that only she is going to send the patient for further scanning so this is what is been done to check is there any metallic metallic things are there inside the patient if it is not she is giving the instruction to the ward boy the ward boy is going so now he is going to the zone 2 okay which is a restricted area okay so no zone 2 so the uh, the patient is getting in nurse is escorting the patient okay and patient is taken in and there is an access control which has been put so now she, she has put a nurse call and the people inside are going to come out the technicians and they are going to open it and patient is taken in so the precaution has been taken that the only after the proper scrutiny the patient is been uh, uh, taken to the um, the desired gantry this is an article which is basically on the tackling of the yamar accident so in nutshell what i was trying to present it today was there is a hospital is full of various processes each process there are various activities the activities there is a failures can happen the failures will have an effect effect can be severe so you have to identify in the each of your workplace what is the hazard condition what harm it can happen what degree of risk it can happen so risk is been addressed by various the the technique which i said so one is by implementing 2s in the workplace then using a ky risk um, uh, risk prediction increasing the sensitivity of the people then identifying the risk score attacking on the high risk score and trying to come with a mitigation strategy with this i uh, i also took a case study of the mri wherein a patient is not been allowed to go or anybody is not allowed to go inside the mri gantry without proper screening with checks and balances with this i would like to conclude and i am open for any questions anybody can ask now now you can unmute yourself and you can uh, you know raise your queries if you have any query if there are no questions maybe you can take the questions from them later you can send it by mail yeah. to me sure sir i will i'll be able to answer uh, to those questions sure 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 thank you for um, sparing your time and patiently hearing thank you thank you sir thank you thank you so much thank you all of you thank you